Well, the Lord Jesus instituted two ordinances for his church. One is baptism, and the other is the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper is repeated or observed repeatedly throughout a believer's life as a sign of fellowship with Christ. When we participate in communion, we are proclaiming that it was our sin that caused Jesus' suffering and his death on the cross. If you were here for equipping hour, you heard Kyle go through John 3, and so you're going to get another uh, dose of that uh, from me this morning. So our passage today is John 3, 16 through 18. Please turn there with me. If you don't have a Bible, there are some men up front here that would be happy to uh, put one in your hands. Just raise your hand. And if you don't have, if you don't own a Bible, you may take this one with you as a gift from Grace Bible Church. Please pray with me. Father, we, we come to you this morning and know that you are a sovereign God and we, our trust is in you, we depend on you, and we depend on the truth that's in your word. So we just praise you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. So let's read together John 3, 16 through 18. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. He who believes in him is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. In these verses, Jesus is speaking to uh, Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a Pharisee, uh, a ruler of the Jews. He was a member of the Sanhedrin, which can be compared to something like a Jewish Supreme Court. Nicodemus came to Jesus late in the hours of the night. He may have come so that other unbelieving Jews would not uh, know he was uh, uh, coming to Jesus. Most likely he came because he was confused, uneasy, in a state of disbelief and doubt. In the early part of John 3, Jesus had informed Nicodemus that unless one is born again, he would not see the kingdom of God. Jesus also told him that if you were not, if one is not born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. In verses 9 and 10, Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, are you the teacher of Israel and you do not understand these things? In verses 16 through 18, Jesus went on to explain to Nicodemus the gospel. In order to get the full meaning of the gospel, we need to look at all three of these verses together. So look down again at verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish. This may be the most well-known verse in the entire Bible. Verse 16 is a statement of fact. It explains how Jesus is going to bring salvation into the world. It was his mission as God's only begotten son to, dis to display the supreme love that God had for this sinful, evil world. The word so in the opening phrase, for God so loved the world, is a modifier that represents the extreme and intense love of God. Please note that God's love was so great that he gave his only begotten son, which was a genuine self-giving love. Remember, there is nothing in sinful man that attracted God to us. He loved because he sovereignly determined 
to do so from the beginning. God not only allowed Jesus to come to the earth in order to suffer and die for all those who would believe, he planned it. Isaiah 53.10 says, But Yahweh was pleased to crush him, putting him to grief. One author writes, God's holiness makes the cross necessary, but it is God's love that makes it possible. God's holiness makes the cross necessary, but it is God's love that makes it possible. The response that God wants from sinful man is found in verse 16 in the words, whoever believes in him. Whoever is a meaningful word. It is a word that is filled with hope and encouragement. It means that anyone who believes in Christ can be saved. It also removes every excuse that an unbelieving sinner may have when he comes face to face with God on Judgment Day. The offer to believe was made to every sinful man and to the one who does not believe, verse 16 says, they will perish and face God's eternal judgment. God's purpose in sending his son is described in verse 17. For God did not send the son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. The statement in verse 17 that the world might be saved through him proves that it does not mean everyone who ever lived, since not all will be saved. Therefore, in referring back to verse 16, Jesus cannot be teaching universal sanctification, universal salvation, since the context promises that unbelievers will perish in eternal judgment. Jesus is saying in verse 17, that for all in the world, there is only one Savior. Only those who are given the Spirit and believe in his gospel will receive salvation and eternal life through him. Verse 18 says, he who believes in him is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. This verse is all about the present reality of judgment. It is crucial to understand the full nature of the gospel as it pertains to the immediate nature of judgment and condemnation. In the words, he who does not believe has been judged already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God, John makes it absolutely clear that condemnation has already taken place for unbelievers. If you are an unbeliever, your judgment is in place, which is condemnation. However, if you've been given the faith to believe and you put your faith and trust in the death and resurrection of Jesus, you will escape that condem condemnation. To believe means more than an intellectual recognition of Christ's death and resurrection. It is a commitment and trust in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, which results in a new nature. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, as anyone, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things passed away. Behold, the new things have come. Christ is God's gift that must be received with a genuine belief by accepting the implications of what it cost to be redeemed. If we come to Jesus in, a super, in the superficial manner, manner that <clears throat> Nicodemus did in the first part of John 3, it will not result in salvation. If you're here today, but your life has not been changed by the saving work of Christ on the cross, please allow the elements to pass you by. 
the Lord's Supper is for believers. However, we want you to know that we are glad you came to worship with us. Please use this time to cry out to God and ask him to save you. Ask any of the elders or the people who brought you what it means to be a Christian. Repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believers, please celebrate with me the grace that has been given to us by God. Take the time, this time, to examine yourself and seek his forgiveness for any confessed sin. Men, come and serve us. Thank you.